Excellent. All right, well, here's the thing. I, I think a lot of us have worked our way through some of the trading problems, um, but a lot of you may be interested on how I work my way through it. Some of us haven't done it. Some of us have. Some of us have made some progress on working through our trading problems, but haven't really. Uh, yes, you will be sent the link. Uh, haven't really gotten the kind of progress that you want or have gotten to a point in your trading where you feel like you're ready to make a life change. Um, maybe you're not ready to trade for a regular income or, you know, daily or to even consider making trading your profession, but you would like to at some point. So maybe you're not quite there yet. Um, when When I decided to... Well, I decided to quit trading a number of times, and, and a lot of you may or may not know my whole story, but I was a very poor trader for about seven years, and ultimately one day I, uh, I had this realization that I had, been, I had been approaching trading like somebody that I was just trying to learn, and I was trying to learn from others, and I was collecting information to learn to be a trader. And so I had lots and lots and lots of information coming in. And, I, of course, I assumed it was all true and good information uh, because somebody wrote it on the Internet. And if they wrote it on the Internet, man, it's got to be true, right? So I was constantly looking externally for all the answers. Now, that being said, that's not to say I wasn't trying to create my own trading system. But I was using the... Um, the logic of a lot of the forums I was seeing. So I did occasionally say, okay, well, none of this stuff that I'm learning from other people is working for me. I'm going to try to create my own trading system. How many of you here have not had a lot of great success, but ended up trying to take the best parts of trading systems that you were learning and tried to create your own trading system and tried to build your own. Here's the problem with that, and, and tell me if maybe maybe I'm speaking for you or not. But you felt like you got really, really close, right? You felt like you were almost there, but couldn't quite get there to gain consistency. And you worked at it, and you worked at it, and you worked at it. And you worked real hard at trying to filter out just your losses, but not your winners. And maybe this went on for years and years and years. Yeah, I, I got. A, I could do a whole book on backtesting, Jeff, and the book would be one page and said, "Don't do it," because it doesn't work. Um, but that's a whole nother topic. Oh, before I go a lot further. I know we don't have a lot of time today. I'm going to cover a lot of material today, but I don't have enough time to cover everything I did that solved my trading problem. So here's what we've done. We pre-recorded part two. At the end of this event today, which is live, we're going to give you a link to part two. We'll also mail that link to you, okay? We'll also mail you a link to this so you'll have both parts. This is because there's so much information. I don't want to have to take a whole lot of your time or where you have to schedule around um, my time. We're going to go ahead and just give you the video. You watch it whenever you have time to watch it, okay? We also have a number of other links in this presentation that you're going to want. I'm going to give you enough information at, uh, in this presentation for you to understand what we do, why we do it, how we do it. The nuts and bolts will come in part two on how to do it. But most of you may not need to know that. You're just looking for the value of what I learned on turning my trading around. So, yeah, all the URLs are going to be in the email. So if you don't want to jot them down now, just you'll get them in the emails, okay? So I just want to make sure that you guys know that I, there are going to be some links here that are not clickable, particularly if you're watching the video. But just look down in the uh, description down below the video, and you'll see the links, okay? All right, so you see this, this guy sitting here? If you take those six monitors, double it, that was me. 
I could not understand how I could continually gain more and more and more information. I have more and more stuff. I have more and more things to help me make trade decisions. Yet, at the end of seven years of failing, of collecting all of this information, of having all these monitors, I was no better trader than I was day one. And that was a huge epiphany for me. When I entered a trade, I had no more confidence that that trade was going to go in my favor than I did the very first trade I put on. In fact, it was probably the opposite. I had no confidence because I had been getting beaten up for seven years. So here's what I did. Well, after I had this epiphany, I wiped the slate clean. I took all the information I know about trading and I just threw it out. Now, why did I do this? So for those of you that don't know me, I used to be a contractor. Uh, I was a remodeling contractor. Did that for 20 years. People called me when they had problems. One of my strengths as a businessman and that led to a, a successful construction business was as, as a problem solver. You throw a problem at me, I'm going to figure it out. One way or another, I'm going to figure it out. So I started thinking, okay, all of this information that I've been given all of these years, that I've been finding all over the internet all these years, has gotten me exactly nowhere. So I got rid of it. I wiped the slate clean. And here's what I decided to do. I'm going to start thinking about trading and think about it as a problem I need to solve. Now, I'm not really sure about you know how good I was going to be at this thinking part it's worked at me with for me at other areas in my life I failed so much at trying to learn other people's way or taking their way and trying to make it my own I might as well try to solve this trading thing from scratch so I just looked at it as a problem with a blank chart I'm looking I looked at it as a problem that I needed to solve and so I've studied blank charts and that's where I started. So I asked myself a question. What do I see here? What exactly is happening here? Where there are, there are things happening here that it seems very obvious to a lot of people that something has changed, okay? When price stops and change directions. So something is happening or many things are happening to make price do this. Why does it do that? What's making it do that? What's causing that? There are very obvious places where this is happening. How can I consistently profit from these areas where price stops and turn? Instead of looking out there on the internet for an answer, for an indicator, for a guru, I finally decided, you know what? None of that's worked. Let me try this. And if this doesn't work, I quit. Is there a way I could profit consistently from that? Could I possibly foresee when price stops and turns? So that's where I that's where I was when I'm trying to figure it out. Now I'm thinking, okay, so I've avoided doing this on my own because I feel like I need to make a lot of money. And I need to make a lot of money fast. That was always my thing. Make a lot of money as fast as I can to win back what I had already lost, right? Then I started thinking, well, wait a minute. All I need to do is win. So should I be thinking about money or should I be thinking about consistency? The problem is that money makes me stupid, right? Money makes me do dumb things. If I could figure out why price turns, even if just a little bit, but I had an extremely high probability of knowing when that was going to happen, wouldn't that be better than to have a lower probability of something long-term happening, but making a lot more money on each trade? Wouldn't just a little be enough? And I started thinking about that, and I started putting the numbers together. If I knew for a fact, of course, we don't know anything for a fact, but if I knew that I could profit a little bit on almost every trade, that seems like something I could do. That seems like something I could shoot for. Nobody out there in the internet world was telling me that. Okay, so now I'm not dumb, but apparently I'm not smart enough to understand how some things work, right? Nor do I have the timing or the patience to do a lot of research or to 
compare a whole lot of indicators or um, uh, analysis. I'm the kind of guy that needs to be smacked in the face with something. Okay, no subtle nuances. That's what I figured out a lot of people were trying to teach me in trading, were these subtle nuances that I'm supposed to pick up to understand when to enter a trade. I needed something where I needed almost no skill to I, to see when a particular setup was going to happen. So again, I'm I'm looking at this and there's something very obvious that happens here. Go look at any chart, you'll see the same thing. So something very obvious is happening here. And it happens over and over and over again. So let's look at that. So price is channeling here. So what are we doing when price is channeling here? If you're jumping in and out of trades, I don't have a lot of hope for you having a lot of success if you're trading in a market that's kind of channeling like this. Most people don't. When price breaks out of that channel, that's when we know that something is happening. Okay? Something's going on. Notice this long bar after breaking out of the channel. After this event today and after you watch part two, I want you to go start pulling up some charts, particularly one minute charts. Tell me what happens after a breakout from a channel and, along, and, and then you get a big push out of the channel. Start looking at what happens. It kind of starts smacking you right in the face. It's really easy to see. There's nothing really special to understand. You got a channel, it's breaking out. So I've identified an area of interest to me as I start looking at these blank charts and I say, here's something that I should study. How about if I try to find some conditions that exist at that exact same moment that might influence price to change directions quickly? So I started studying everything that was going on inside of that bar. Because the most valuable information you have in trading is what's going on inside the current bar, okay? The most immediate information is going to cause the most immediate reaction. And again, we're just looking for an edge. We just want to know what's going to happen next. So I started thinking, I wonder if those bounces or reversals or pullbacks. I wonder if they happen around support and resistance. So the very first technical indicator I put back on my charts was support and resistance. I used floor trader pivots. And I did that because that's one thing. There's very few things that you know for sure in trading. One thing I know for sure is that most traders use support and resistance. And support and resistance lines are self-fulfilling prophecies, meaning if people believe there's support and resistance in these areas, then there is support and resistance in these areas, okay? So my thinking is, okay, well, let's go and let's look at the lines that are most common and that would be floor trader pivots. And let's put those on the charts. And let's see how price is actually reacting. So I did that. And that was the very first thing that I started noticing. Very obvious that after these breakouts, this hard push, this bar that's much longer than the previous bars, would very typically slam into a line of support or resistance. Here's something else that I noticed with my study. The longer it's been since price has touched or crossed that line of support or resistance, the stronger that line is going to be, okay? The more likely it is price is going to react to it. This setup, which we now call my FT setup, I actually started trading this setup very first thing. This is all I had. This is all I had on my charts right here. I did not have any other indicators to help me see these breakouts, these big pushes, the other condition, any other conditions that might be going on. I started trading these pullback trades as they bounced off support and resistance, and I started getting pretty good at it. So what I did was created a set of support and resistance lines that told me how long it had been since price had touched or crossed that line. So I could know how strong that line is likely to be, how price is likely to react to that line. I don't know anything for sure, but I do know that if price approaches a line quickly, 
there's a good chance that line is going to rebuff price at least a little bit. So there's my very first indicator that I create for my personal trading, for my personal setups. Okay, this is called our FT reset. Those numbers will reset each time those each time price hits those lines. So I know how long it's been. So we call that the relative strength for those lines. So now I'm thinking, okay, well that's working pretty good. This is probably working better than anybody ever taught me. I wonder what's going on inside the bar just before it hits support and resistance. So that's what I started doing. So that's what I started thinking. What if I had a heads up that other things were going on inside that bar before it hit support and resistance? Would that give me a heads up to know to be ready for a trade setup? And would that increase the likelihood of it being a winning trade? How could I find the ones that were likely to work best? So I started doing more research. I started studying the data, all of the data coming into that bar. Order flow is the most obvious data. Now, why would that be obvious? If the order flow, and you know what I mean by order flow, order flow is not the orders being placed, okay? Order flow, as I'm referring to it, is orders being processed through the exchange, okay? That means a, a a transaction has taken place. So this is about our, my indicator that I ended up developing called the speed tick indicator. So that I could tell when the orders were being processed so fast, it's unlikely that us little guys could do that. So we've got these guys, this is kind of how I envision mission control at these quants, right? At these uh, these guys that, that run these HFTs on the computers that are inside the exchanges or next to the exchange. Yeah, I'll show you that in a minute. So this is kind of how I envision they work, right? And they're out there just killing us. And then there's us, the little guys that you know, hardly know how to turn on our computer, much less know what the heck it's doing or how to how to make it do anything. And we're just sitting there just, you know, clicking away. We don't have the ability to move the market. Us little guys don't have the ability to move the market, no matter how many of us there are, like a bunch of monkeys just hammered away placing orders. No matter how many of us there are, we, have, we do not have the technical or financial ability that the big boys have. So no matter what, we're not going to move the market. We're not going to create trades processing so fast through the exchanges that it manipulates the market like these guys can. Okay, It's all done by the big boys, the guys that are running these supercomputers. These are the guys that can make that happen. So the speed tick does does this, okay? So on the left, you have a time and sales window, okay? If you try to trade using time and sales, God bless you. If you can do it, you're awesome. Um, I couldn't. I could watch it for about three minutes, and then I become hypnotized, and I forget what I'm doing. But there's a lot of very valuable information going on here. So I started taking that information and I sent it off to a programmer and I said, okay, here's what I want to know. I want to know when the speed of the orders being processed reaches a certain point. Okay. So basically I want to know, I want you to create a histogram for me that's like a speedometer. And that's essentially what we're doing with the, with the speed tick. That's what I'm saying. It's executed orders, and we can pick up how fast those orders are being executed. That's the key. When orders exceeded a certain rate, now this is our, our NinjaTrader 7 version that we use for many years very successfully. When orders exceed a certain rate, we know that retail traders are not trading those trades or not placing those trades, or those trades are not being processed for the retail traders. It's a manipulation. It's a market manipulation. And this is about the only way that we can track what those guys do because they're very adept at covering their tracks. They want nobody to know what they're doing. 
So they don't necessarily do it in a particularly high volume because that would – everybody watches volume, so that would, you know, kind of just tip their hand and everybody knows what they're doing. They don't really want people to know. So they're going to try to hide these big orders, but they get – they get executed very quickly because they're practically inside the exchanges. Okay. So just in milliseconds, these orders are being processed. So this, this started leading us to, if, if it exceeded a certain rate of certain, think of miles per hour, then it's got to be manipulated. Now we, we, with the advent of NinjaTrader 8, we were able to make this for what we had to do previously in NinjaTrader 7 is every instrument we had to come up with a set with some settings for that instrument. Um, and we had to tune each instrument with these settings inside the speed tick. We no longer have to do that for NinjaTrader 8. We have the ability to just put it on the chart and forget it. Okay, there, there are some settings that we send out with a default that you can mess around with, that you can make the speed tick um, read, readings either uh, a little bit more or less sensitive. So we have that. So what we're reading now inside these bars, now I want you to look at those bars. Look how they're dropping out of a channel. Those big bars dropping out of where price is channeling and dropping hard. We're getting those speed ticks. Okay, so I'm reading the order flow inside each bar. During the course of the bar is when the speed tick prints. So we're watching now. We're watching this bar. Trades are now coming in too fast to realistically believe that retail traders are doing it. And when that happens, when that manipulation happens, it's very likely that they're manipulating it for a reason. And we're going to talk about momentum traders in a minute. And that's who we're picking up. All right. And so, there, like I say, inside, there are several threshold settings that you can set inside the, uh, the speed tick settings. What we do essentially is add this order flow data to a tick chart to create a, a histogram, uh, which isn't on your chart. It, you can put it on there if you want to, but we generally trade without it on there. The data from the histogram is then extrapolated over a variable time period and that results in a measurable threshold level, okay? And so that's where we get the threshold levels. So you see the histogram down here at the bottom. We don't actually use that in trading. We use it to help us tune it. Now, then we have another indicator called a ricochet. This used, this was kind of a byproduct of my speed tick study that maybe price didn't hit a certain rate, a certain miles per hour, but it accelerated quickly. I can answer that in just a second, Jeff. It accelerated very quickly. You'll notice down at the histogram, the bars prior to those tall bars were generally very uh, much lower bars, okay? So that pri things were moving very slowly. Orders were being processed at a very regular rate. It's kind of like a, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a, uh, a drag racer taking off, right? When that happens, we typically, price will typically change directions. Okay, remember what I'm doing here. I'm measuring inside every bar so I can foresee price stopping and turning. Okay, um, different thresholds. There are times, Jeff, where the orders being processed might hit a certain rate and then go beyond that rate. So, the second threshold we use is kind of like a be careful, it's a yellow light. The third threshold we use is a red light. We don't trade it because there are things going on in the markets that could cause volatility that is much more volatile than the market makers create. For example, a tweet that goes out that causes everybody to go crazy or some other news event that causes everybody and everything to go crazy. This can certainly happen. So when it hits the third threshold, I actually want to back off because it's it's less likely at this point that it's a mechanical manipulation. It could be still, but it's it's just it's just outside of our ability to have that level of confidence that that's what it is. All right, so I'm looking at this and I've got these these order flow indicators that I now have 
and I'm and I'm killing it. And I'm starting to teach other people how to do it. And I end up creating a trade room because all my friends that I traded with wanted to do it. So we opened a, a room. It was Omnovia at the time. We've been at this for 10 years, by the way. And so I keep thinking, but there's there's still more information that I'm not getting. There's still things going on. So what else can I learn from the bar just before price stops and turns? Okay. Okay. I've done an entire webinar on this next thing, so I'm not going to go into the whole thing for you. We will send you this link in the email for you that are attending here. If you're watching this on video, it's down below. There is a video on volume spread analysis that I did uh, that we put on YouTube. It's got 102,000 views on it so far. Um, and it's the number, all you have to do is Google, I mean, uh, do volume spread analysis on YouTube. Just do a search and we're the first ones to pop up. Um, very well received video so that you understand what we're doing for the next indicator, okay? But essentially, here's what we're doing. I'm going inside every single bar and I'm measuring buying and selling pressure, okay? And what I'm looking for as I'm measuring buying and selling pressure is when buyers are getting exhausted and sellers are taking over or vice versa. Now, there's a lot of buying and selling going on, but not all the buyers and sellers are important to me. So I don't really, I don't really care about most of them. But there are some that I'm very interested in. You look at all these people on these, these trucks. And they're either going to market, they're coming from market, some are buyers, some are sellers. Which ones are important to me? And I, and I learned this through volume spread analysis. So basically what I'm looking for is to spot these periods uh, in a price trend that are predisposed to changing directions. And these changes are caused by changes in supply and demand. Okay. Weaknesses in an uptrend, strengths in a downtrend, okay? There's an awful lot going on here, but we go to a lot of effort to try to make sure this is easy. Remember, I'm looking for the slap in the face thing. I don't want to have to figure all this stuff out on the fly. So in short, what we did on the... Um, on that video that you can watch on volume spread analysis, this is a very quick summary. We've got these areas of accumulation and distribution that these big boys are doing as they're manipulating the market. After each manipulation, you'll see that we get these up thrust bars followed by a predictable pullback, okay? This retracement or a pullback, it happens every time and I can prove you can prove it to yourself by looking at your by going to look at a trading chart okay we've taken this very complex if you looked at other value spread analysis systems for trading they are so confusing they'll take they'll give you classes that last for two weeks to teach you how to use it we've got a system that's either yes or no yes inside this bar price is churning buyers are taking over from sellers sellers are taking over from buyers and all we do is that happen is to print a little dot that says it's happening right now you use that to help you make a trade decision Okay, it's not that many, Albert. It's really not that many. It's like saying, gosh, look at all those tools in that tool trailer to build that house. Okay, you think that, you know, well, I could build a house and I personally could build a house with a hammer and a saw. I could build an entire house with a hammer and a handsaw. I could do it. But why would I want to? If there's a tool to make something easier and more efficient, by golly, I'm going to use it. And we're only using these on the current bar, Albert. After it rolls off, it doesn't matter anymore. So if you're looking at the current bar, all decisions are made there. And it is the most simple trading system that there is. So here's what's happening. If you look at two, I know a lot of you like to look at static charts and you spend your, your off hours of trading and you're looking at static charts and you're trying to figure out where's a good trade setup or how could I have done this different or, you know, 
what's different here than over here? You know, I, I've done it. I did it for seven years. I was looking, 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 constantly scrolling back on charts. Here's two candlesticks, right? They look identical, but there's only four pieces of information in each one. High, low, open, close. That's it. That's all you know about this bar. But there's a lot more going on inside that bar. So here's an example. Here are the ticks coming into this first bar. The bar opens, it drops, it goes back up. The ticks are now coming in relatively steady. It hits the high, comes back down, closes. Okay, we call that a no churn bar. The same bar, looking the exact same. We have price go down, go up, go down, go up, go straight up. And then it starts this churning action. This churning action is telling me that at this price point, at this level, the sellers are sitting and waiting for the exhausted buyers to get there. And when that happens, we print a dot. That dot tells you the buyers are, be are becoming exhausted and the sellers are taking control. And why wouldn't you want something to tell you that? So here's what it looks like. Right at this point, sellers are in control. Then the buyers start jumping in. Buyers have entered because they were all hanging around around 365. They were waiting for the sellers to get down to 365. And they take control from the exhausted sellers. Uh, so I look at this. What do you suppose? Oh, time frame? Uh, one minute. Again, one minute. And why? Why would I use a one-minute chart? It goes back to everything that we've been talking about. In today's trading, the market makers make the markets. The market makers have the ability to move the markets at their whim in milliseconds, right? Somebody puts out a tweet. The markets change in seconds when there's a uh, some tweet about something with China. You guys have been seeing it. So how would you feel putting on a trade an hour ago based on some technical indicators that something's going to happen an hour from now and you're just supposed to write it out and not expect that's all I do, Gareth. That's all we trade is futures. How would I expect that no market makers are going to manipulate the markets and no tweets or other social media is going to come out. How would I go into a trade that's going to take me 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours? How do you do that with any confidence that nothing is going to interfere with the technical analysis that you did two hours ago? It's a different world, folks. You've got to catch up. Guess who's killing it? The momentum traders. Momentum traders. You know who these guys are? I did another webinar on this. You can find it on our YouTube site. I'll give you that link in a minute. Momentum traders. You've all heard buy low, sell high. Momentum traders are buy high, sell higher. They're trapping us. There's the, <laughs> it's these guys. It's these guys. All right. So you're like, uh, you, you're sitting there with an open mind and you're trying to figure out what's going on. And the momentum traders are going, hey, price is going up everybody's buying you need to buy too right or you're gonna miss out so they're trying to tell you you jump in and of course you're like oh holy crap I'm missing out something's happening tick charts are fine but why why remove time Alan I mean tick charts are okay but I prefer time-based charts because everything is based on time time is an extremely valuable tool in trading and why people want to remove time is because it creates a pretty chart neat clean tidy chart but without time professional traders all use time you will find small retail traders that try to use non time based charts but all professional traders always include time in their chart if they're an actual professional trader. I mean, you'll get a lot of people to try to sell you all kinds of stuff. But time is, a, is an essential element. And you can see that on the blank charts that I showed you. When price is channeling, you want to see that over time. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what. Albert, save that question. I don't want to get sidetracked, but I'll answer that question in a few minutes. Okay, save it for the end. So these momentum traders create this big push at the end 
they're going to buy high, push it up, sell higher, and then dump all their assets back on the market so it plummets price. Okay? Watch that other video that I'm telling you about. So we're looking at big moves. And of course, we all know big moves means big volume, right? Actually, not necessarily. We're measuring climactic volume. We want to know when these momentum traders are also manipulating the market. So big moves don't necessarily mean big volume. All it means is that the average volume of the last 10 bars relative to the current bar of the volume histogram is at least 200% of the average for the current bar of this uh, climax of the volume histogram. Okay. So it's all about, it's all relative. It's all about percentage. And when we have this climactic volume, again, that means that there's a high likelihood that this bar is manipulated. And we're going to be we're going to be having a pullback. Okay, so this is our new climactic volume indicator. We're all pretty darn excited about it, and it's doing a great job. Okay, and this is what it looks like on a chart. We just make it real simple. Albert, I do want to address that, and please hang out, hang around. I've got a pretty compelling argument for you. Okay, all right. So let's say that okay, yeah, you've got this climatic volume thing figured out. Okay, we've got order flow. We've got all this. Let's start trading. Show me some trades. Here's the thing. This is a puzzle that we need to put the pieces together. Here, this is the part that I'm trying to get across to you, Albert. Rather than just trading momentum, rather than just trading climatic volume or order flow, or divergence, which is going to be on the recording that we, we already did for you, or the rate of the orders processed and, and things like that. What we're looking for is a confluence of these events happening all at once. And why are we doing that? We're doing that because we're looking for strengths in a downtrend and weaknesses in an uptrend. When all of these things come together, not only is a trade set up likely, but it's likely imminent that it's coming. Okay. So here's, here's Albert, here's a, an argument for you. Take this graphic here. You've got a room full of people and they're asked a technical question about something. Each of these people come from a different background yet they all have something to contribute to whatever this question is. Each one of them ha comes from a different area. They have a different perspective. They use different data, but yet you ask them a specific question, they are all in agreement with each other. Are you inclined to believe what this group of professionals agrees to with each other? The larger the group, the more likely it is that they're probably right as a group, okay? You might have one guy give you his opinion, and you take that with a grain of, grain of salt, and you have this woman, and you take that with a grain of salt. Next thing you know, it's a groundswell of an opinion, and they all agree with each other, even though that guy's a doctor, that she's a lawyer, the one behind is an engineer, the one behind there is a mechanic, the one behind there does other things, but they're all somewhat related in what they're working on. Okay, so here's what it looks like. I mean, here's a trade setup for you, Albert. This is one of our trade setups. What we've got is a big push, a long bar, a speed tick, an overbought condition, our pullback alert, which says the price is churning. The next bar opens. We're going to short it right there. Now, does that look terribly confusing? It's really not. But we've done something to help make that a little easier for you. We've taken three of those indicators and we're putting them into one indicator that we call the rock star. So you don't, so those three indicators are actually inside the rock star indicator that's going to help you make those decisions. Okay. I wanted you to know some of the information and the way we used to trade but now we've made it even easier and more powerful. So you've got all of these confluence of indicators. Now, I did not go over tonight. As you can see, I have a lot to talk about, right? And this could go on and on and on.
I did not go over some of our more powerful indicators. Divergence is extremely important to us. Price being overbought or oversold is extremely important. And the rock star has changed how we trade for the better. We've made, it's made it so much easier and makes trading decisions easier to make. They're pretty much yes or no decisions. So here's the URL for part two of today's event. Again, we didn't want to necessarily schedule an event where you had to schedule a time to be here. Okay, we, we went ahead and pre-recorded it with a, a group and we're, we're now making that available. So you can go ahead and watch this uh, and we're going to mail this to you. So if you don't want to write this down, we're going to email this to you here in just a little bit. But if you want to write it, if you want to watch it right now, Connor should be putting in a link there so you could just click on it. All right. So we also we have a lot of other videos that cover a lot of stuff that we do with our system. A lot to look over. There's also this video down here at the bottom is is just some trades we took today. So if you want to see what we do and how simple it is, take a look at the couple of winning trades we had today in the trade room. How easy they are to see, how easy they are to manage. It really is very straightforward. And Connor's got your links right there for those. And if you don't, if you're not here, if you're watching on video, they're down below in the description. So I will answer your questions in just a minute, but we do have a special offer for you guys. We've got our Einstein bundle, which is everything we have everything we will ever have, and unlimited access to all of our educational material, our trade room, you get priority support, we will remotely connect to your, oh, I didn't mean easy, like you're going to hit it out of the park. I meant that it's not complicated, but yes, you do have to work at it. And I did not mean to imply that this was ever going to be easy. We're the first ones to say that this is hard work and that's the easy way, is to do the hard work. What I meant to say is that it's easy to understand where the setups are based on what the indicators are telling you. That, that's really what I meant. Execution is, is what you need to work at. Execution is actually the harder part, but execution is a skill that you can work on and develop that is not putting on a trade and waiting two hours and crossing your fingers and hoping, okay? So we've got this, basically we call it our one and done. Once you bought the Einstein bundle, there's never anything else to buy from us. If we, if we develop new indicators you get it for free like I, I was just telling Peter um, all of our Einstein members got the already got the the new climatic volume indicator they already have it all right? I haven't even released it to the public yet but the Einstein people already have it so anything we ever develop to help us again we don't change what we're doing we've been doing that we're on 10 years now 10 years we've been doing the exact same thing if we've had people leave the trade room for whatever reason their personal life whatever they come back two three years later we're doing the same thing they jump right back in where they left off there might be one or two new indicators that they need to learn what it does and what the setups are but it's the same thing we've been trading pullbacks for 10 years because they're regular and consistent and the more the markets are manipulated the better we get at it because we're looking to pick up basically pick up the scraps from the market manipulators from the big boys we wait until they're doing their thing and then we follow along behind them I right, kind of trade in their shadows. Hi everyone, Connor Peterson here with Second Brain Trading and The Intentional Trader. Thank you so much for watching this video replay. Now Tony did continue on for about 35 minutes uh, during our FAQ portion of the event. If you would like to listen to that FAQ portion, then you can find that link in the description below. You can also find links to all of the other videos that were discussed, including the very important part two of this event. Now keep in mind, this offer does expire Wednesday, October 23rd. So if you have any questions about it, please contact me at support at the and we can get you all fixed up. All right, happy trading.